I'm very happy to introduce uh, Sushila Desai, Senior Manager of Executive, Executive Recruitment from Hilton. Uh, she's here to discuss the importance of the candidate experience and its impact on hiring, especially the candidates we're all after, um, but may not be looking the elusive passive candidate. So without further ado, thank you so much. So good morning. How's everybody today? Good, so I'm here, I'm the Senior Manager at uh, Hilton Worldwide. I'm responsible for the hiring of our senior level executives, so the VPs and above. Um, and I'm here to talk about something that I'm really passionate about, which is the candidate experience. I think we've all been a candidate at one point in our lives, or maybe two or three. Uh, so, and we've had some great experiences, and we've had some not so great experiences. So at Hilton, what we've decided to do is we decided to make it a priority to tighten up how our candidates go through the experience at Hilton. We know that our candidates become our employees, and our candidates also become our brand ambassadors. And with Glassdoor and uh, Twitter, it becomes almost instantaneously that the word gets out. Had a great experience, had a bad experience. <laughs> so how many here have a person dedicated to the candidate experience in your company? A few. So at Hilton, what we've done, and um, one of the things that, I, that Hilton does great is that we're, we're all about innovation, about turning things around, looking at them different ways, and trying to make things better, continuous improvement. So one of the things that we did was we have actually a uh, manager of candidate experience, and that's their sole responsibility. So at Hilton, when we recruit, we look at our motto, Heart of Hilton, the light and warmth of hospitality. And to show you a little bit about us, I'm going to present a little video about some of the team members that we have. Well, you know, a building is just a building with four walls and a roof. What makes it feel like home, the place where you want to be, is the people inside of the building. Why do I do what I do? That's a very good question. <laughs> it's one team, one mission. It feels like family. It really feels like home. I can make people's days. It has to come from the heart. I can delight people. I have the most extraordinary job in the world. The breakfast team, we are very, very important. When they said, we love the breakfast, then it's like, oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I always had this passion to teach people. And if I can inspire them, then they will inspire our guests. Guests come down, they want a clean bed. They want a nice, comfortable, clean bed. I think the housekeeping is kind of like the unseen backbone of the industry. Nice to meet you. Look at the cutlery and put down the cutlery. So at the end of the day, I'm working with other people. It's all about building relationships, making sure that we all have a common understanding of what we're trying to achieve. All of us here at our jobs is to have make life easier for all of our team members around the world. Conrad Hilton talked about being the light and warmth of hospitality. I see that. I see the peace through travel. It's amazing to meet these people. Six thirty start the cocktail hour, guarantee of When you know that it was perfect. You go home happy. Being able to make that customer smile and make the difference is what really inspires me. You belong right here, right now. We bring that joy to other guests, and guests recognize the, the joyfulness, and that's what the job is all about. <laughs> <laughs> My job is to excel, 
not because I'm good, but because my team is fantastic. I wanted to coach them, and now I had a cook who became a vice president. I have a, a Balbo who become general manager now. So these are the things in life which give me a reward. We're all about hospitality and we like to treat our guests and our candidates the same way. So we ask ourselves, when our candidates come, are they having a glowing or glaring experience? Glaring is bad, right? They're going to share that. Um, so which one does your company offer? That's something for you to take back to your um, hiring managers as well as your talent acquisition um, group. So one of the things that you get by having a great candidate experience is you become uh, Fortune's 100 best companies to work for, or you become top 50 in diversity. A few more, I'm not gonna go through them, and a few more, and just a few more. That's 2016. So that's how you know you have a really great candidate experience because you're gonna start getting all these awards which then compound and people will wanna work for your company. So we believe candidates are our guests. Uh, we, we, we know that at Hilton we have a guest uh, and candidate-centric approach because we know some of these facts. That a candidate experience, whether successful or not, influences their perception of our brand, not only as a candidate, but as a potential or even current guest. So if you're, if you're at Chick-fil-A or if you're at Cava and your candidate has a bad experience, they're probably not gonna wanna eat at your restaurant anymore or stay at your hotel. 77% um, of people share the recruitment experience with their networks. So that's lightning speed. It happens and it's very difficult to correct once it's out there on the internet. 74% of people would share a negative candidate experience. Probably not the great one, maybe amongst their friends the great one, uh, but the negative one is the most damage. 53% of candidates say the recruitment experience influences their purchasing habits, which we just went over. Um, and 42% of candidates would never seek employment at that company again after a bad candidate experience. So you can lose some potentially uh, wonderful candidates which would become employees through a bad candidate experience. We also know that a lot of, uh, from, at Hilton, we do a lot of sourcing for our candidates. So our candidates come passively, especially in the VP level and above. Um, there's many cases where we don't even post our vice president level positions. They're completely gone through sourcing and, and passive. So most candidates are open to hearing a little bit about what you have to offer them. And as they move through the process, they're gonna become more and more interested. But if they have that bad candidate experience, you're gonna lose them. So some of the components to hosting a great candidate experience is communication. Um, we hear mostly that that drop off of communication is the first level of disappointment in the candidate. Detail is really important. So when we have someone coming in, we make sure that the details are all covered. And that includes the hiring manager detail. So the hiring manager knows exactly who's coming in to see them. We, do, we provide a candidate assessment so that hiring manager not only has a resume, but has our assessment on them. And, and we do um, OSIL agendas, complete agendas from the time they get off the plane to the time they come to our property. We send cars to meet them. They stay at our hotels. We make sure that they have pad and paper, pencils, um, whatever they need. Uh, when they come to our property, they're met up at the uh, corporate executive offices and they're escorted by somebody the entire day from office to office. So it's a very seamless approach, or it may seem, because we always have somebody calling and saying, can't do that anymore, can't meet that candidate, so I always have to have plan B so that we have somebody that might escort them to dinner or maybe a coffee to fill in that break, or simply give them a room and say, would you like some time to catch up? Um, personalization, again, um, knowing their names, knowing their backgrounds, so the person that's escorting them knows um, some conversations to talk about. Um, feedback, feedback is extremely important. So these people took the time 
to maybe perhaps do a higher view. We typically will do higher views for interviews. We don't do phone interviews. Um, it's worked out very well for us. Candidate, that respects the uh, candidate's time. It gives us a little more time back in our day, too. Um, and it's a great assessment tool. How many people here actually use a video interviews? So less than half still. Um, we feel that it's a great tool. And um, again, it gives you that face-to-face -face feeling without actually being in the room. So candidates are like elephants. They don't forget. So that's something we have forefront. In um, our organization, we have, um, again, different levels of contact with the candidates. Um, I heard, and I'm sure we all have heard of bad candidate experiences, but I think one of the worst ones I've ever heard was when a woman had a a higher view interview, two or three of them, and was then asked to come out cross country to, this is a multinational company, which she did, and paid for it on her own dollar. It was a long trip, went back, dead silence, right into the black hole. She continued to call the company, and after, she, I think she told me five or six times, she finally got an answer and that the person who was interviewing her had taken another position within the corporation, but that position, would just, they decided, wasn't going to be filled. That was a really bad candidate experience. It went up to the CEO, and I will give credit to that company. They sent that woman flowers and apology. But here she's telling me about it, and I know who the company is. I won't share it with you. But again, a really bad candidate experience, and this was somebody who was at a VP level. Um, how many people here have personally had a bad candidate experience? Wow, that's a lot. Me too. <laughs> um, so that's something, you know, it's, it's a branding issue and it's so important. I think that companies really need to focus in on it um, much more than they have. You know, convey the message of your company, filling the earth with the light and warmth of hospitality was Conrad Hilton's. Um, message, and we are trying to take that to not only our candidates, but also our employees, because our employees were once candidate, and we've implemented programs where we have catch me if you can, and that is a, when a, a person can have a shout out to anybody in the organization, and it's worked really well. We have days where we have uh, team members, we call ourselves team members, days. Um, the CEO recently invited all of corporate to his house in, um, on the water in Maryland and had, and this was over 600 people. Uh, so it does come from the top. So if you can get the buy-in from the CEO all the way down, it'll trickle through the company. Um, candidates are people. You know, make them feel at ease. There's only a few things in life that you do that are really not comfortable. And I'd say buying a house, Changing a job, getting married, maybe. <laughs> um, candidates will remember what, what you didn't do well more than what you did do well. So make sure it's seamless. Um, candidates' experience is holistic for us. It's from the moment we connect with the candidate for the first time to the time they're hired or dispositioned, keyword dispositioned. So no is the second best answer. Make sure you do the full round and give them an answer and give them feedback. Feedback is one of the second things I hear mostly about disappointing experiences. Go back to your managers and get the feedback and share it with them in a, in a nice way. I have had many candidates say to me, thank you so much for sharing that feedback because I, I need to improve moving forward. Or maybe the feedback is, you weren't right for this particular position, but you are right for our company. And I can't tell you how many times I have had an individual where they weren't right for one position, but I've reached back and they became employees because they were great candidates. So don't look at candidates just as for one role. Look at them holistically. Are they good for your organization? So here's just a few of the um, letters. We will gauge ourselves more on emails like this than uh, surveys. We want to actually see people 
as emails. So here's a couple emails for a, a recruiter. I completed my video interview with corporate recruiter. I'd like to express my thanks for arranging the interview, which went without a glitch. The interviewer had a unique talent making a stranger like me feel very comfortable in the interview process. And more importantly, she brought the best of me to light. I enjoyed every moment of her friendly conversation. She said Hilton's tradition is to treat everyone as a guest, but I will go one step further. She not only treated me like a guest, but more like a friend. So that's the kind of things we want to see. We want to see people, and when you have people that feel comfortable, you're going to get a good read on them. And then the other uh, one is about process. Very excited about the opportunity. Look forward to next steps. The team uh, in recruiting has been fantastic. They're top notch, professional, and so personable. So personal again comes out. They found a way to connect. Connecting is really important because you're going to also be following these people through their careers. And, and again, the candidate experience goes further than just the candidate. It goes when they're employees, too. So checking back with them after six, or, uh, six months or so. Um, they made me feel com welcome, wanted, and respected. Respected keyword again. Very vulnerable when you're looking for a job. The offer process has left me feeling like more like a number of Processes have left me feeling like a number or one of the herd, not this group. I've enjoyed the process thoroughly. So again, being just really uh, thoughtful about how you're interviewing somebody. Um, I always open up my interviews with something personal. Uh, and I lead into the conversation later, get more, dig into the uh, details of the candidate. But very important for the candidate experience for them to feel comfortable and very important for you to get to know them um, and be able to dig into their background in a comfortable way. They'll share more information that way. So when you're picking your candidates, be careful how you treat them because you've selected them and they're gonna remember what it is that you did or didn't do. Candidate experience can affect your company in so many more ways than you can imagine. Um, word travels fast, uh, so make it a fun process and make sure that you understand the people before they even walk into the room. Make sure their experience from the time they come in to the time you disposition them is a great one. And I think you're, you will also have a lot of awards like we do at Hilton. So thank you very much. And I have a few, well, I have a lot more time. <laughs> so we can open up for some questions about my process or? Good. Yep. Hi, thank you. I'm Cheryl Peterson from iSIMS, and I wanted to just ask the quick question because we do the same thing. We try to make sure that we look at candidates holistically, and so they don't just apply for one position, they apply for multiple, and we try to think about how they're a fit for the organization. But it can be challenging because then they're coming back in for multiple interviews, so I'd love to hear how Hilton addresses that. How I address it to the candidate or to the hiring managers? To the Candidate and making sure that they're getting that great experience because they came in thinking they're getting one job or coming in for an interview for yep. one, and now they might be talking to hiring managers for multiple yep. different jobs. Right. Okay, so I could definitely answer that. I had a candidate who came in through a referral and was looking at a position that was HR focused, and she was in an enterprise IT uh, role previously. Um, she went through the process. And it was a long process, but all through the process, you know, I kept her in touch with, you know, okay, this is where you stand in the candidates. You're a little lighter than this person in this respect, but we may have an opening coming up. You know, I knew in the back of my mind that there was going to be another opening coming up, and so I think that's that's one of the things that you need to know is you have to understand what, you know, where your openings are going to be, and and you can't always always tell your candidates that. But I encouraged her to know that I was going to be reaching back to her with a role that might fit her a little bit more tightly. So I kept in touch with her. And when the role opened up, probably four months later, I knew she was still looking. And I knew that Hilton was her top number one priority. Um, and she came in for the interview. And she wrote me a letter and came up to my office and said, wow, I'm so glad that I didn't actually get that other position, because this IT position is like spot on for me. So it was a win-win situation for everybody, but I think the key is that if you've got really good talent, keep in touch with them. I have another situation going on right now where I have learned that we have a couple more senior level positions, and I've reached back to both the candidates. One actually just recently took a position and said, 
I'm only into it for two, two weeks, so I'm really interested in coming back to talk to you. But again, it's all about keeping in touch with the best candidates. Make them feel comfortable, make them your friends, because you want those kind of employees in your, in your organization. Thanks. You made a comment about you make it personal in the beginning. So how do you make it personal without getting into those sensitive issues? So that's one of the struggles I have with my leadership team. They want to get into the number of children and then they keep oh, no. it in the back of their head. <laughs> so I try to give them coaching, but what, give me some examples of things you've used to get personal with them. Yeah, so normally what I'll do is I'll talk about where they come from. You know, oh, you flew in from Dallas, how's the weather there? Um, you know, just more of that type of thing. Um, oh, I, you know, I used to, I had a friend in Dallas, really enjoyed it. What do you enjoy about Dallas? What, you know, and then we'll go into, so would you, would you consider moving here to McLean? I was, you know, just that kind of thing. Not, not um, how many kids do you have and <laughs> who are you voting for? <laughs> not a good thing. So, yeah. Hi. Do you cater your um, candidate experience for anything different for employee referrals or VIP referrals, possibly? Um, we always respond to any referrals we have. Uh, even if we don't have a position, we will speak with them. We'll be very open with them at the end of the conversation that we don't have anything open at the moment, but we wanted to meet you. We think you're potentially a great uh, candidate to, or you know, potential team member at Hilton. So, and then I'll explain to them that uh, at Hilton, the reason why we've developed this executive recruitment group is because we don't want to just have, you know, people applying. We want to have a pipeline uh, of talent. So it's a Sorry, process real for quick. us. Is that at all levels or just executive levels? This is just at executive levels I'm talking about. But referral wise, yes, anybody in the company that's referred to us, no matter what level, we'll get an interview. And all internal candidates will also get interviews. Maybe introduce yourself too and uh, what company you're from. Thanks. Hi, I'm Katherine Smith. I work for Sony Music. I have a question around the feedback piece. Mm -hmm. So with websites like Glassdoor, um, we tend to shy away from giving too much specific feedback unless it's very you know, obvious, like you're not qualified for the role because of X, Y, Z. Um, when it gets into like the sticky situations of the specific um, you know, interview, if there's things that they did wrong in the interview, we tend to shy away from it and we kind of backtrack and, and move around the question of feedback. So just wondering how you handle situations like that if you do tend to lean towards giving more feedback rather than not. I think it depends on, on, this, on the position itself, but um, constructive feedback I think is really good for people. It may be, again, that there was a candidate that had seven to 10 years experience, um, maybe came directly from the hospitality group that was maybe a little edge above you. Um, I don't think I would get into, you know, you twirled your hair too much or anything like that, but you know, more, giving them a benchmark of, as to why they didn't get the job so that they can go back and say, well, maybe it really wasn't about me personally. It was about the fact that someone had just a little bit more experience than I did. Hello, I'm LaShawn Pyle with Chick-fil-A. You mentioned that you had a dedicated uh, manager for the candidate experience. Can you share with us a little bit about that role, what they're responsible for, some of the things that they do? Sure. So yes, we do have a dedicated person for customer experience, our candidate experience. Uh, she has a staff under her that does all of the logistics, so all of the coordinations, reaching out, uh, they're the central point, so if you were to come in to interview with us, they would be reaching out to you, they would be making your flight arrangements, you would have agenda for that, make all the payments ahead of time, and then we have coordinate, so we have coordinators, and they are all assigned to an executive search person. So, and their sole responsibility is to make sure that things happen seamlessly. So, you know, even if, um, you know, Chris Nassetta, the CEO, can't make it, 
she's got to make sure that it seems like it's seamless. So they fill in the, the time or they get another person to, to also speak to that. So it's, it's, it's a little bit of a crazy job. <laughs> I don't know, I could do it. But she, she does it seamlessly. Uh, and again, this is a new function that we've put in within Hilton because we want to take that guest experience that we have and move it more towards the corporate candidate experience. So like we treat our guests, we want to treat our candidates. So it's a work in progress. We're still you know, tweaking it. It's very new. Hi, Kayla Rockle. I'm with uh, Stryker. Um, what are some of the things that you do to, I guess, train the people who are interviewing the candidate so that they're aware of how important that experience is? Because I run into hiring managers kind of just don't get it, um, and I need to make sure that they do. What are some of the things that you do for that? Yeah, so we actually have a quite a big document for our hiring managers that goes over you know, how to interview, what questions th that might be good pertaining to their particular group. Uh, we also have a feedback form, so anytime anybody has been interviewed, that feedback form gets uh, emailed right to the, bless you. Uh, <laughs> right to the, um, the hiring manager, and we follow up to make sure that they give us all that feedback. Uh, and that's good for a couple of things. We do that for all the interviewers so that we can combine and compile all the feedback, look at it, and then go over it with the hiring manager. So we make sure our hiring managers are in the process and are deep into the process. We don't want them just interviewing these people and, and just leaving them off because we have to make sure that we close the loop with them and whichever way, we need that information too. So it, it's kind of, we try not to make it too cumbersome because you know hiring managers don't like to give feedback, <laughs> especially if, they, so it's, it's pretty, you know, bullet form, um, give us the feedback, do you recommend moving forward, do you not, why not, um, you know, leadership skills that, we, we tailored it to each opening, but the hiring managers, and again this has to come from the top, so that they know that there's buy-in and that they'll actually send you that feedback. But it's so important to that candidate experience to give that feedback back, whatever it may be. If it's a no, it's a no. But at least it's feedback. Hi, uh, my name is Martina from, uh, from Purpose. And my question is around transparency. So you're talking about executive level hires, but even all the way down to entry level, um, sort of two prong. One, when you're giving feedback, I think we've all used templates to give, you know, the no, send, send the response of no, of like, thank you so much for your time. Um, but when giving feedback, what level of transparency are you giving? And then the second part of that is you mentioned, you know, providing the candidate that comes in for an interview with a schedule or, or an itinerary. So they're seeing that they're meeting with the CEO and then something changes. Is it a bait and switch or is it this is what happened because of this, and this is what we're going to do instead. So your first question was about transparency. Um, and tell me again. Feedback. Oh, and feedback, OK. Um, in, in relation to the candidate, can you explain your answer? I mean, I'm not sure what you're asking. How transparent, ooh, I, how transparent are you being um, in wanting to be able to propel the candidate experience and have them walk away with, okay, I, I could have done better here or I could have done better there. How transparent can you be when giving them that feedback? Oh yeah, and you mentioned something about also the, the email letter. The yeah, I, I mean, I think yep. my pr practices is we haven't really given a lot of specific feedback unless there is that really strong candidate connection um, yep. to someone that's much further along in the process. Yep. So how at, at what point in the process recruiting do process do you really start to get transparent? Yeah, so anybody that we touch, anybody that we reach out to on, on a phone call, anybody that, people that come in, because it's impossible, we all know, to respond to everybody. So if you're coming through our system and nobody has talked to you, nobody's reached out to you, nobody's emailed you, um, then there might be an automated uh, email. But if we have actually spoken to somebody, uh, then we reach out to them personally. So and the second question you had was, sorry. 
Oh, yes. So we try to make it seamless. So we don't want the candidate to feel uncomfortable that they're not meeting with XYZ. We may say that there's been a change in the interview schedule. She was called away or he was called away. Um, we'd like you to meet with so-and-so. Hi, Olga Manzoni, TC Transcontinental Packaging. Can you take me through just sort of the, the life of a candidate, a bit of a journey, um, and, and more specifically, any innovative activities that you do for that experience and the time span? So what is the, uh, the timeline for a typical process? Okay. So our timeline is, is pretty fast for most, most companies. So if we have sourced a candidate, we know that we have a, a short amount of attention span to get them interested. So once we lock and load on a candidate, we're gonna move them through fairly quickly, the process. And again, this is more VP level and above. So if you were, so the first process point of, point of contact would probably be from somebody at Hilton, our sourcer, who would call and explain to you that she's looking for whatever. Um, if that person will then be pre-screened. Uh, after the pre-screening, which would be a telephone call, um, that candidate would then come to me or to one of my colleagues and we would do a video interview. The video interview would probably be an hour or so more. And then if once that happens, we'd, I will do an assessment on that candidate. Uh, the can I will have a discussion. We have weekly status meetings with all our hiring managers and we have PowerPoints and it will um, show the hiring manager potential candidates, source candidates, internal candidates, we complete list. So we share that with our hiring managers and we'll discuss and decide who it is that we actually want to move forward in the process. So it probably would be another hire view or another video interview with the hiring manager. So after that process, that candidate would move to an on-site which is where we will reach out to them and make all the arrangements for them, their flight, their hotel, um, maybe having dinner after with, um, with some of the other uh, hiring people. And gen typically, if, once somebody's on site, we would probably want to, if they have to come back maybe one other time, we try not to do that. We try to be very uh, cognizant of people's time. So um, after that, we'd meet and we decide to make an offer or not. So again, it's, it's, it's probably one of the quickest processes I've ever been to. And as, even when they were approaching me, and it was over the holiday season between um, the holiday and the new year, I thought, okay, well, this is gonna be probably till April. And I think it was in December, like 22nd, when I first spoke to Hilton. And I was on board by February, first week of February. So pretty quick, and I was I was relocating. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Ritesh from Ernst and Young. Uh, we measure candidate experience of all the rejected candidates as well by a survey. How is Hilton doing it for applicants other than the feedbacks, and if you measure it for rejected candidates as well? Yeah. So. The process for uh, general managers in uh, some of our properties, they do have surveys that they're doing. Um, we tend to, because we don't have as many openings at the VP and above level and, and strictly in our headquarters locations, um, we make sure that we reach back to each candidate that's, that's been through the process, but through for the other parts of the organization, we do have surveys. And we are working more, and again, this is a, this is a new initiative at Hilton to try to gather some of that information and, and digest it and see where we can continue to improve. Great, last question. Thanks, uh, Kathleen Carroll with Aon. I have a question around HireVue. We also use HireVue quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, we use it for campus recruiting and for our high volume recruiting and we use it just one way video. I'm curious, are you using it one way or two way and then also are you using it at, for those higher level roles as well? Yeah, we were doing it two way. It's recorded um, and we, we do it for, for the VP levels and above, yes. Do you use it one way at all for roles? Never. <laughs> I will say we have found that to be a great, um, very effective and efficient. Uh, we send out the link, we give 
pre right. questions and it just allows the recruiters to review it and if they know within a minute that it's not going to be somebody that they're going to you know want to pursue then it's over so it's been a really great tool for us to do it one way so. Yeah, so, so the one way is, and just to clarify, because I've never done it one way, that's when you're sending them the higher view and they're actually just being recorded on a screen talking into, and they have a certain number of minutes in order to, to answer those questions. Yeah. yeah, we shy away from that because, again, we want to be more personalized in our approach. And, you know, if we invite them, we're hoping that we, we did review their, their uh, resumes and they've been through already a couple screening processes before they even come to me to do a higher view. So although it's really not a first interview that they're doing when they come to, to me for a higher view, they've already been pre-screened, so twice, yeah. Great, all right, thank you so much, appreciate it.